Get ready. Scientists are working on a pill to erase people's memories by Emma Fiala. This is Creative Commons on The Mind Unleashed. If you could erase the worst memory of your life, would you? Scientists are working on a pill for that. Well, I don't know if we should because, you know, if you erase that kind of a memory, you may erase what you've learned from all that and you may just relive your mistakes, go through the same pain again. I mean, you know, at least if you've gone through something which is not at all pleasant, you know to stay away from that kind of experience. You, it's a learning process. But anyway, this is what the scientists are now coming up with. McGill University in Montreal. I used to live in, I'm Canadian as well, besides America, I used to live in Montreal. McGill University is in Montreal. I used to go to the museum there. Amazing stuff. So McGill University Associate Professor of Psychiatry, Dr. Alain Brunet, embarked on the monumental task of making 60 people forget something, and he succeeded. The 60 study participants shared the unpleasant experience of a traumatic end to relationship, be it from infidelity or abandonment, and that ultimately resulted in an adjustment disorder. To put it simply, these 60 people and others like them just need to forget. This is according to the National Post. Over four to six sessions, volunteers read aloud from a typed script they had composed themselves. The first person account their, of their breakup with as many emotional details as possible while under the influence of propranolol, a common and inexpensive blood pressure pill, end quote. The point being to reactivate those traumatic memories and all of the difficult emotions they include. I don't know if that's good to be rehashing, be rehashing those things. You just scratch your open wounds again. Now, anyway, the participants were then asked questions during the session. How did you feel? How do you expect them to feel? How do you feel now? Is your memory different from last week? To judge whether the strength of their memories were decreasing due to memory reactivating, reactivation while taking pro pranolol as the researchers posted, posited or not. Full results of the study have been submitted to a journal, according to the National Post. However, the Post also reports that Dr. Brunet has been hesitant to discuss the results due to the sheer speed and success of erasing specific memories. The 30 participants just could not believe that we could do such so much in such a short amount of time, they said. Brunet explaining, and he added, they were able to turn the page. That's what they would tell us. Quote, I feel like I've turned the page. I'm no longer obsessed by this person or this relationship, end quote. So why is Dr. Brunet so hesitant to share the news about his own breakthrough? Well, it turns out the idea of entirely wiping out unpleasant memories is quite unsettling to him. The ability on the cellular level to search for and destroy specific brain cells Oh, you have to destroy the brain cells? That's not a good idea. Destroying brain cells is never a good idea. Search out for and destroy specific brain cells associated with specific memories is not going to come from my lab, Brunet said. Ethically speaking, Brunet says that as long as only one choice exists right now and is toning down a memory, we feel on very solid and comfortable ground. Rather than having the ability to erase such an integral aspect of what makes us who we are. However, others are working on what Dr. Brunet will not. Brunet asks, if one day you had two options, I can tone down your memory or I can remove it altogether from your head, from your mind, what would you choose? Good question. Such an ability may bring to mind imaginative shocking and sometimes horrifying fictional stories like that of Room 101 in George Orwell's 1984, a room which every citizen must visit to face their worst fears and phobias in hopes of conquering it and ultimately accepting Big Brother in the end, no longer is a reality of altering memories somewhat left to science fiction. Quote, if you could erase the memory of the worst day of your life, would you? End quote. Elizabeth Phelps and Stephen Hoffman ask in the journal Nature, and what constitutes a memory that is worth removing. Through the theory of memory reconsolidation, we're inching closer and closer to the day when we may be able to edit, dull, or prevent memories 
from even becoming memories in the first place by simply taking a pill to block the synaptic changes needed in the brain immediately following or even years after an event is experienced. According to Dr. Brunet, when we remember a memory, the two, first, the two or five hour window then opens in which the same memory becomes quote unquote liability. It's during that time that a memory can be modified before being put back into storage in the brain. So what does the medication proparanolol do during this process? According to Brunet, it leaves that unlocked memory somewhat free by interfering with the proteins needed to put it back where it belongs. Quote, memory is dynamic, unquote. Boston University neuroscientist Steve Ramirez says, when we recall memory, we have the ability to add information to it, sort of like we are clicking save as on a text document or putting out an old piece of art and adding a little watercolor where it looks like something was missing. If we continue to do this over and over, we may end up with something that barely looks like the original event or first memory of that event. Thankfully, for those who fear a nefarious usage of this tweaking of our memories, like something straight out of 1984, altering memories on a mass scale is easier said than done. Because of the way our brains work, there isn't simply one area labeled memory storage where we file each memory as we make them and to where they neatly return after recall. Instead, our memories are scattered throughout the brain. Even bits and pieces of the same memory are found in different parts of the brain, associated with processing what those things were, the memory of what we saw, what we heard, what we smelled, and how we felt are all stored in different places. Of memory recall, Ramirez explained, Right now, there are a lot of memories that are asleep in your brain. If I asked you, what did you do last night? That memory just woke up. How did it happen? You just that, uh, you did that effortlessly, like in 500 milliseconds, and you weren't, and, and yet we don't know how that process works. So we certainly cannot be on the verge of completely erasing memories if we don't even know how they work in the first place, can we? Well, thanks to Ramirez, some other researchers, 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 and uh, the whole lot of mice were not getting closer to understanding. We are getting closer to understanding and therefore altering that process. As previously reported in the Mind Unleashed, this is where I'm reading it from, and this is Creative Commons. These researchers basically figured out how to implant memories into mice by reverse engineering a memory. According to the research, memory is, decoded, is coded by patterns of neural activity in distinct circuits. Therefore, it should be possible to reverse engineer a memory by artificially creating these patterns of activity in the absence of the sensory experience. The goal here, according to Ramirez, is to overwrite uh, the bad memories with good ones. Quote, in depression, there is a bias towards negative thinking, Ramirez said. And he says, maybe we need to tackle these kinds of disorders from all angles, end quote. Instead of with the same medication we've been using for years, with little advancement since the 1970s. Even still, simply the talk of altering such a big part of what makes us us is understandably unsettling. While the idea has clear and obvious clinical applications, it takes only a bit of imagination to think where advancements like this could lead us if they fall into the wrong hands. And what if we can't remember those hands, this powerful, uh, whose hands this powerful fell into? This is by Emma Fiala. It's Creative Commons on The Mind Unleashed. And I'll just remember to tell you, some of my viewers have complaints that they're getting unsubscribed even though they keep subscribing and they're not getting their video updates. Please make sure you're subscribed and ring the bell so you can get your new videos from my channel. Thank you so much for your support. God bless you. If you'd like to join me on my Patreon account, you will hear content not covered by mainstream media. These riveting stories will be based on my research and I will state my opinions and give my personal insight on diverse and controversial 
subjects and world events, events not covered by mainstream media, and not certainly on, not supported by YouTube guidelines. So whatever I have on my Patreon, most of those will not be on my YouTube channel. Please consider becoming a member today. More of the, the most significant and important videos will be on my Patreon channel. Your support helps me to continue my research and keeps this YouTube channel alive. And we depend on your support, your generous charity, because we help economically challenged families here in Athens, Greece, in Kapota, and we also help the young generation with university tuition and the community around our church. Thank you.